rise. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead. 
for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson on this Easter Sunday comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace about Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 to 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, The resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If 
Before I read the gospel, I need a few moments to get back into the space. We were in this room at 8 o'clock this morning, and I was distracted by lots of things. I think the sanctuary is elegant, and I like elegant. The simplicity of the plants that the altar guild and those that uh, decorated for this day, this special day, for you, our guests, the cross was described with the white, uh, the sheer linens hanging off of it as the arms of Christ open to all of the world and reaching for the world. I thought that was a beautiful way to describe that. Our smiling faces of our choir, the beautiful sounds that they make, the trumpets. I was thinking about the lesson in the gospel, how the trumpets, when Jesus rose from the grave, I'm just not sure that they're very angelic. But I know that I'm glad to have them with us, and it's always good to have these four guys with us in service. Hope to see them a whole lot more. The handbells are spectacular. Renee at the organ, just, it's beautiful. And you gathered here. It's really fun to see you. So welcome to St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. And now that I've got a little bit of a warm-up, how about I read the gospel and have a quick 45-minute sermon? <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, that would be Sunday, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Yesterday at 11 o'clock in the morning, we buried Clarence Standhart the first funeral that will take place. His burial is on Tuesday. We have another funeral for Thursday morning. One of our 49-year-olds who has departed this life with the sign of faith, leaving behind three boys and a husband. And on Friday morning, we will bury Deborah at 10 o'clock in Trap. And at 12 o'clock, I'm back at Morell Funeral Home for the services for Jean Rohrbach. We are seemingly surrounded by death, and if you aren't, I certainly am, and if you're not aware of it, I'm going to bring to your attention that this planet we live on is beautiful and spectacular, but it is one huge cemetery. It is just a cemetery. It is trees that bloom in the spring, and they're beautiful, and they're gorgeous, and we look at the dogwood trees. You can identify them by their bark, of course, and you look at all the others, and they are spectacular. They are in their glory. But at some point of their life, they will get older and they will die and they will break off and they will fall and they'll go right back to the ground from which it came from. Insects. I'm a fly fisherman, so I know that you only get X amount of hours with those little buggers, no pun intended. They come out of the mud, they come up into the air, their wings dry off, they fly away, and in hours they are dead. We are surrounded by death. And that is a great story of who we are at St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. We are in the middle of what was once a casket company, our backyard. That casket company turned into a retirement facility and a nursing home, a cemetery only a few blocks away. 
We are surrounded by death, and we have had as our legacy and our mission throughout that entire time to help people understand that death has no sting, death has no victory, and someone has to be in the midst of it shining the light, even if it takes a long time to ignite it. It is worth every effort to take our littlest ones among us, like Nyla, where'd she go? Nyla, and help her so that she knows exactly why we light the Christ candle. She knows why the Paschal lamb, the Paschal candle, the sacrificial lamb, the blood that was necessary in that burnt offering. No more burnt offerings are necessary because we have the lamb of God on the altar table. And that's why on the altar table, it's the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, the blood of the lamb, the body of the lamb sacrificed for us. But that story, for whatever reason, through decades past, has been lost to many. As I ask members of my own congregation, they have no idea what I'm talking about when I talk about the Lamb of God. So it seems to me as though we ought to take a little bit of time and teach what that is. And for those of you that already know this story, good. Go share the story with others. Because isn't that why we're here today? Or are we here because it's Easter? The bunny came out of the tomb, saw its shadow, and didn't, you know, went back in. That's not why we're here. We're here because of death. And yet the thing we fear the greatest, the greatest fear of all, at least according to research, is the fear of death. Because we all know, even the atheist knows, somewhere deep in their bones, I believe, somewhere deep in their bones, they know that death is not final, that there's something left. Even if they explain it away as, well, I'm just going to be worm food. Not so much, not according to my belief. Atheists, they're fun, aren't they? That's what I want to do. Noel, that's what I want to do. With every atheist, you know, all you got to do to stir them up a little bit and agitate them is hand them a baby, because typically they say, oh my God, huh, now you got it right. Didn't get that one, did you? Okay. <laughs> and then I'll just keep on moving. <clears throat> Nyla, how old are you? 15. There is a possibility that you, little one, will become a leader in the 22nd century. You just might make it. You might make it 80 more years. You might. The way medical health care is going today, well, <laughs> the way it could go today, you could possibly make it to the 22nd century. And I wonder what you will say to the littlest of ones around you, probably over at Walnut Woods by then, probably surrounded by your great-great-grandchildren, probably, I hope you'll say, somewhere way back then I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson that God always shows up because God promises to always show up. December 7th, 1988, some of you, those of you who were around back then, I actually remember this. There was a magnitude 6.9 earthquake that shook northwestern Armenia. That's right about where Turkey is today. Some of you remember that earthquake. If you remember, it was, it was devastating. 30,000 died within a four-minute period because the aftershock was 5.8. I'm going to read this. The Armenian earthquake needed only four minutes to flatten the nation and kill 30,000 people. Moments after the deadly tremor ceased, a father raced to an elementary school to save his son. And this is where it gets unbelievably tender and beautiful. A father arrived. He saw that the building had been leveled, and he approximated where his son's classroom would have been. And he started to remove the rubble. And after two hours, he kept removing the rubble, and the folks, including the police, said, there's no hope. Other parents gathered. They knew that their children were beneath that rubble, but they had already given up hope. And he went for four hours and six hours and eight hours and 24 hours and 36 hours. And on the 38th hour, as he removed one final boulder, he yelled for his son, Arman, Arman. And the voice answered, Dad. It's me. 
Then the boy added these priceless words, it's written. I told the other kids not to worry. I told them, if you were alive, Dad, you would save me. And if you were to save me, you will save them too. Because you promised. Dad, you promised that no matter what, I'll always be able to count on you being there for me. I love that promise. I love the promises we make to each other. When we say, you can count on me. I've got your back. You can trust. You can believe. Yesterday at the funeral, now, it was easy to bury Stan. How many of you knew Stan? Clarence, Stan Hart. It was so easy to bury this guy because he wasn't there. It's like the text today. He wasn't there. He had already departed this life with a sign of faith, and he was with God in glory, and everyone in the room knew it. No fear. The text that we use, do not let your hearts be troubled. No one's heart was troubled. No one's heart was troubled. They knew that Clarence had lived a full life, a good life, a good man, sacrificing what he wanted for what others wanted. It's a spectacular behavior, probably unfamiliar to many, to do what someone else wants over what you want to do. To ask first, what do you want to do before you take control and do the very thing that you want to do? To give of yourself, to be a servant to another. The question is, do you believe the promise that God made to you? Do you believe the promise... Dare we believe that promise that God will come back and take us unto himself? That's what it says in that chapter of John. I am going to prepare a place for you, and if I go I'll pre and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you can be with me where I am forever. Oh, that's easy when it's a Clarence. Clarence was an old guy. He was over 55. He was old. He had lived the full life. But what about Deborah, 49? What about the 31-year-old that dies from leukemia one year after the birth of her son? What about the accidents that will surely take place today? Six people per minute will die today. 57 million will die this upcoming year. Death surrounds us. Death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? For those who love God and believe the story of Jesus at the tomb, for those who believe that story, there is nothing to fear. Nothing. It's silly, isn't it? It's silly to be here today. Really, you're going to go home and you're going to tell people, the minister told us the reason we came to church is so we could celebrate victory over death. It's silly. Seriously, how many of you were already saying, I can't wait to get home and over the dinner table talk about that? <laughs> Anybody? But that's the story. The story is if I die tomorrow, not only will you have onions at the reception on everything and pickles, on everything because I don't eat either and we'll get an insurance writer to have yingling lager so you can drink some beer but besides that what will the story be what will the story be for you if I die today what will you say will you say I know he is in heaven. Will you say, I believe in the same God he believes in? Will you affirm your faith beyond the Apostles' Creed and the Long Creed, the Nicene Creed that we're going to do today? Will you affirm your belief that God conquered death, conquered sin, conquered the grave? Will you affirm it? Well, I think it's wonderful. Death. Yea, though I walk... How many of you learned this when you were a little kid? Do you remember the 23rd Psalm? Do you remember that particular passage? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be afraid of everything. 
No, what does it say? I will fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff. Permanence. We know our geography. We know what affixes us. We know what anchors us. Any of you ever sail? I used to sail. I'm not that good at it any longer because I haven't done it for a while. But you've been a sail. You've sailed, right? In fact, you've sailed off course at times, I think, if I remember correctly, right? You, didn't you go adrift? Never, never. So we have all these devices today that are, we call them GPSs. I, I call people all the time. I call back to the office and ask Becky, can you please send me directions? And Becky says, why don't you just punch it into your GPS? Why would I use a GPS? I have her. <laughs> but we all have a GPS. If you're finding yourself adrift now in your life, if you're finding yourself floating with the waves, if you're finding yourself in the midst of a storm, then you better go back to an old method and not look for a new one. The old method is throw out your anchor. What's your anchor? If you find yourself spiritually adrift, go back to the old way. Break open your Bible. Dust it off and read it. In the midst of life's storms, in the midst of questions of death, in the midst of when things go upside down and all over the place, you've got to find the root. You've got to find the anchor. Because for sure, death is seeking you. For sure, death will catch up with you. And for sure, at some point, the question will be there. What's next? And for those who believe in God you can claim a promise. A promise that I think is the greatest of all three words, except for maybe the three words, I love you. But when you get down to the wire and death approaches you and whatever death looks like, you can have an assurance and you can scream back in death's face. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And there's your assurance that where death has been conquered, where death has no longer sting, you too live just like Jesus. For in the resurrection, he got us. He saved us. And now he lives for us. While we live on this earth, let's do something to make sure that everybody else knows the message. And while we're on this earth, let's take as many people as we can. I forget who it was a long, long time ago but he said that if there is a rapture, and I'm not so sure I believe in a rapture, but if there is one, he said, I hope I'm in the biggest of crowds because when the rapture happens, I want to grab the two people beside me by their shirt collars, and as we're going up, I want to be able to look them in the face and say, do you believe in Jesus? And if they say no, <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad way to look at it. Anyway, happy Easter. Christ is risen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able. 
Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Alleluia, God, you are resurrection. Bring joy to your church as we spread the good news that Jesus is risen. Lead us to proclaim this message with persistence and confidence. Hear us, O God. Alleluia, God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first fruits of new life around us. Inspire our gratitude and renew our commitment to stewardship of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia, God, you are reconciliation. You show no partiality among the nations, but instead call all people to the way of peace. Bring an end to conflict and division. Renew leaders and advocates for peace with a commitment to the common good. Hear us, O God. Alleluia. God, you are strength. Awaken hope and perseverance in all who need to hear a word of life this day. Those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, or sick, especially Dave Babb and Connie. Yes. We lift him to you uh, now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia, God, you are life. We give you thanks for all the newly baptized who by water and your word are forever joined to Christ's death and resurrection. Embolden all who share this baptized life and renew us in faith and in action. Hear us, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we celebrate with those who took their first communion this week. Abigail, Aidan, Brianna, Luke, and David. We pray for good health, healing, and strength for Brian, Parker, Alice, John, Judy, Bonnie and Bonnie, Adrian and Baby, Joseph and Michaela, and Terry. We pray for comfort, peace, and faith for Sherry, for peace and care and comfort for those who have lost loved ones the families and friends of the Miller family, the Huber family, the Rohrbach family, and the Stanhart family. Now we lift in prayer as we say aloud those uh, who we would like to pray for. Hallelujah, God, you are comfort. Draw near to all who grieve. Refresh us with the promise that you will destroy death and that with all the saints we will be made alive forever in Christ. Hear us, O God. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
risen one, as you broke bread with the disciples on the shore, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry and tend the weary, and all for your love's sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and delight, that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give thanks for your promise and presence which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen. Amen. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all your promises may come to us and your creation. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. Alleluia. Come to the feast. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us, risen to new life with you. Send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world in the name of our risen Savior and Lord. And with the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. <laughs>